Good morning, friends. We are back in the kitchen. We had that beautiful dinner party yesterday, and now we need to get to work on these tomatoes we purchased from a local farmer. If you missed yesterday, my local farmer friend, who's an organic farmer, called me and said, I've got canning tomatoes for you for a really good price if you want them. Now, I think this year I'm gonna grow enough tomatoes to last me an entire year. These are tomatoes that we grew together out in the garden. This is just the start of my tomato harvest because I put up way more than I've needed the last two years. So I'm gonna be going into this year with more tomato products than I have the need to can, I guess if that makes any sense. My only really two big tomato canning projects I wanted to do this year were ketchup and enchilada sauce. But when your farmer friend calls you and says, we have canning tomatoes at a good price that are organic, you say yes. You never know when your own tomato harvest is not gonna be a good one. Maybe next year we don't get any tomatoes. So we might as well take advantage of a good opportunity when it presents itself. And that's what I did. I'm not only really grateful that I went up there yesterday to pick up these tomatoes, they're seconds, which means they're not perfect tomatoes, but they're perfectly perfect to can. For example, this one has a little bit of blemishing on the bottom, but that's a perfect tomato. I could still slice this up and put it on a sandwich, no problem. We actually had some beautiful tomatoes yesterday, but these aren't something that he's gonna wanna sell to our local fancy grocery stores, because that's what he does, or at the farmer's market, because they have some blemishes. So no one's gonna wanna pay a premium price for that, or like this one has a cut in it, so it needs to be dealt with right away. But they're perfectly good to can. I'm really glad I went up there yesterday and I purchased those tomatoes because it was a great opportunity for me to put in a really big order for some other produce that he grows that's organic and absolutely beautiful. I put in an order of 160 pounds of onions. Half of those are gonna be red onions, half of them are gonna be white. These are homegrown onions here that I am cutting up and we're gonna put in our enchilada sauce this morning. But I did not grow enough onions to last me a year, not even close. Basically, I probably have enough onions to get me through all the canning projects we wanna do, and that's about it. So I was able to put that order in. I also put in an order for bell peppers, two different styles. We're gonna do stuffed bell peppers as some freezer meals, and I ordered number ones for bell peppers for those. Those are gonna be beautiful perfect bell peppers. And then I also put in an order of second bell peppers, which means they're not perfect bell peppers, but I'm gonna dice and slice those up. We're gonna freeze those, preserve those for making things like chilies and fajitas and those types of things. And then I ordered 10 pounds of red serranos and 10 pounds of jalapenos. So that, will be exciting when we get to go pick those up later this week. These onions are really dirty. I harvested them, unfortunately, when it was kind of damp outside, so we need to give them a good wash. So I'm gonna cut the tops and bottoms off them, and we're gonna compost the peels, and then we will wash the actual onion. So I have them right in here. We're putting them in the colander. I don't even know if I said that today's project is enchilada sauce. This is a recipe I found online and I will link her recipe down in the description box. This is a pressure canning recipe. And so I will show you the process of how to turn these onions, tomatoes, peppers, garlic, couple herbs into a beautiful home can enchilada sauce. I haven't done this in a while. Well, I haven't made enchilada sauce in a while. Typically in the past when I've made enchilada sauce, it was before I learned how to pressure can. So I would freeze it. So you can definitely make this recipe and freeze it if you want, if you are not into pressure canning, but I'm gonna show you how easy pressure canning is. There's nothing to be intimidated, even though I was intimidated to pressure can for years. So now I'm excited to be able to make homemade enchilada sauce and have it on my pantry shelf because the enchilada sauce that you buy in a can has a lot of silly ingredients in it that aren't necessary to make a beautiful, tasty enchilada sauce. 
And one really nice thing is I don't have to make dinner tonight. We are heading out to a family members for dinner tonight. So I can just enjoy being in the kitchen and getting these projects done. And I know that someone else is gonna be taking care of dinner for me, which is always a good thing. We are gonna to get to this pile of dishes. But last night I got the dishwasher running and they didn't all fit. And I wanted to get this project going today before I unloaded and loaded the dishwasher because this is going to have to simmer on the stove for a while. So I know I'll have time to do that while we're cooking the enchilada sauce. So just trying to be a time efficient, even though normally I like to start with an empty dishwasher. The recipe that I'm following only makes two pints. That is not enough, that's not how I do things around here. If I'm gonna make enchilada sauce, I'm gonna make a year, if not a year and a half's worth of enchilada sauce. So what I'm gonna do is, I think 20 times this recipe, which is a lot. And this recipe calls for both crushed canned tomatoes and fresh tomatoes. But because I have all fresh tomatoes, I am gonna to have to kind of adapt the order and the steps in which things are done in this recipe but as long as I have the right ingredients and I follow the correct processing time in the pressure canner that shouldn't be a problem at, an, at all. So the recipe calls for boiling the onions. I am going to go ahead and saute them up and I need to know how many cups of onions versus how many cups of tomatoes I'm having. So I am going to use my food processor to dice up these onions very, 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 very fine, almost into like a paste, because we are gonna strain this enchilada sauce so that we have a really smooth enchilada sauce. And I don't think my blender is gonna do that very well unless I add tomatoes to it, and I don't wanna add tomatoes because I want to be able to measure out the correct tomato to onion ratio. Okay, so we got our onions in our food processor. You can see how liquidy we have the onions. That is exactly what we want for the next step in this process. This pot is what we're gonna make the enchilada sauce in. And I just wanna say a huge thank you because this was a gift in my P.O. box. And let me show you how big this thing is. For comparison, it's massive. And it's super, super heavy bottom. Last year when I made salsa, which I don't need to make this year because I have enough of it still, I made it my salsa in my canning pot, which is a very, very thin pot, and this is very heavy, so this is gonna be awesome for canning. Not only to make canned products in, but this is big enough to water bath can in. I'm so excited about it. This thing is huge. You can see how big it is next to me. And then also last year, I didn't have a stir stick that was big enough to put in my big canning pot to make my salsa. So I was gifted these in my PO box as well. And look at this, plenty big enough. Love it, I'm so excited. You guys are such a blessing to me. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for helping build this amazing community. I just, I just appreciate you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a little bit of oil in the bottom of our pot. Now maybe that's a third of a cup, quarter of a cup of oil, but this is a big pot. I can link this pot down in the description box if you're interested in it, because like I said, it's huge and awesome. So, so grateful for this pot. So I'm gonna turn this on. We're gonna get our onions in here and I'm gonna keep doing this until we get all of our onions pureed in the pot cooking. We're not looking to caramelize these onions. We just want to cook them a little bit.
I'm so grateful for this pot already because just those amount of onions already filled it probably about two to three and a half inches. So we're gonna cook this and kind of get these onions cooked a little bit while we start processing the tomatoes. So to process these tomatoes, all we're gonna do is take the tomato and I'm gonna cut the core out. We'll cut out any bad spots. This is kind of where this one tomato I showed you earlier had a little bit of blemishes, no big deal. We're gonna stick these tomatoes in our high powered blender and we're gonna blend those up. And there is a measuring cup on the side of this so I'll be able to measure how many cups of tomatoes we will be processing. You can see how this just has a little bit of, I don't know, like scabbing on the bottom. There's nothing wrong with that to affect the quality of the tomato. I'm just gonna cut that off. I'm not gonna skin these tomatoes at all. That might be a controversial thing. I never have skinned my tomatoes when I can them. I did it the first year and I was like, wow, that is way too much work. And I didn't feel like it affected the quality when I just make crushed tomatoes or salsa. But according to the real directions of candy, you are supposed to peel your tomatoes, except for this recipe does not say you need to peel the tomatoes. So I'm not going to do it. Now, there is an exception to that <laughs> that I'm gonna do this year. I want to make ketchup, like I said, and I did not like the peels. And, you know what, we are technically peeling these tomatoes because we are gonna run this through a fine mesh strainer. So I take that all back. We are peeling these tomatoes, but we're gonna do it later. But my ketchup that I made, I didn't peel or de-seed those tomatoes, and I did not like the texture of it as a dipping ketchup. It, the flavor was fantastic. I put it in things like meatloaf, sloppy joes, sweet and sour meatballs, anything that called for ketchup as an ingredient, I used it up, no problem. But as a condiment for putting on burgers or dipping fries. We didn't really enjoy the texture and I didn't cook it down enough. So this year when I make ketchup, we are going to peel and de-seed the tomatoes. And I'll bring you along with that when we do that. But I kind of want to make our ketchup with just Roma tomatoes. So I'm waiting to have enough Roma tomatoes from the garden in order to do that. I'm not quite ready to put this tomatoes in the pot yet because I want those onions to cook down a little bit. So I'm just gonna transfer them into this big bowl so I can keep processing the tomatoes. So each one of these holds eight cups. making a tally here on my recipe of how many cups I'm putting in here so I know I did five blender fulls four of them are in this bowl we got one box completely empty so these were each 25 pounds so I still have this and I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do with these tomatoes I'm not sure yet what we're gonna do with them but for now we're gonna get these tomatoes in this pot these onions are nice and cooked. I can tell by the sound of the bubbles that a lot of the moisture has cooked out of them and they are getting cooked. But before I add any tomatoes, I want to add some salt. I'm going to start with that much. Remember, this is a massive, massive pot. I hope all of our tomatoes will fit in here. I don't know if this was a good idea. Oh, I think it's gonna fit. Awesome, because we still have to add all of our 
peppers. Great, this is perfect. Yesterday I peeled and minced quite a bit of garlic. This is not gonna be enough for what we need. I'm gonna blend this up in the blender with one tomato so that I get this finer. And then we're gonna add this and a couple other things. So to our blender, I'm gonna add our garlic because I want this to be really finely minced because we are gonna strain it. Oregano from the garden, I want this to also be really fine. Probably putting about a quarter cup in there. And then just so that this will blend really well, I'm gonna add two tomatoes to add a little bit of moisture. This blends up well. That smells so, so good. Oh my goodness. Oh, that oregano and garlic. I was a little worried I was gonna make that a little too oregano-y. I don't think so. I think that's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna get this in the pot. Now the recipe says that this needs to cook for at least a half an hour, but that's when you're only making two pints. And we're making a whole lot more than two pints, so this is gonna have to cook for a while. Plus we still have to put all the peppers. We have to toast the peppers, blend those up and put those in here as well. I don't personally feel like peeling any more garlic at the moment, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out our garlic powder that we dried up already this year. We're gonna add that. This is from the garden. Add quite a bit. Remember, this is a huge pot. Mix that in. This is obviously the really early stages of this recipe but I do want to taste it. We're making a lot. I want to make sure it tastes really good as we go. Oh, that's good. Right now it just tastes like really, really yummy tomato soup almost because it's got the onions, the oregano, the tomatoes, but we've got to get all the chili peppers in there. That can use some more garlic. The salt right now is perfect. I'm gonna put all that garlic in there, which means I have no powdered garlic right now, so that needs to be on the agenda of something we do ASAP. I decided that I'm going to process the rest of these tomatoes and the ones I have over there into basically what I just made, the base of the enchilada sauce, but without the peppers, because that base, the onions, the garlic, the tomatoes, and the oregano is so good. I might leave the oregano out so I can add it later, but the onions and garlic in that is so delicious. So I am gonna blend up these tomatoes. So these tomatoes have to be dealt with today because, you know, they are extremely ripe and they're ready to be processed. So I'm gonna blend these up just the same way we blended up the tomatoes over there. I'm gonna blend up a bunch more onions and in my roaster pan, we're gonna get all of these tomatoes. Not the best idea, it's smoking. I wanted, I was Googling how long to pressure can just the base, the onions and the tomatoes for. And so I have this way too hot. <laughs> I like to do a lot of can or cooking in these roaster pans. So let me turn this off. I gotta go down and get a bunch more onions and I'm gonna get all those tomatoes blended up. I have my two boxes now emptied. This is how much we got in the roaster pan. I have this on about 325 degrees. I'm gonna let this cook with the lid off so it can evaporate. I'm still gonna add a ton of these tomatoes, but before I do that and or process the onions and garlic, I need to get these toasting because I'm gonna be doing a ton of pressure cleaning and I wanna get this enchilada sauce at a state where I can start to actually can it so that I'm not up until midnight. So I got a bunch of different types of chilies. The recipe called for anchos and these ones, but it said you can do a mixture of a bunch of different ones. So I'm gonna do a mixture of a bunch of different ones. I have New Mexican, Californian, anchos. I'm not sure how to pronounce this one. So we're gonna use these as well. 
I need a total of 60 peppers because we are 20 times in this recipe. Oh my goodness, these smell so good. They smell like raisins, they're wonderful. So I'm just gonna start counting out peppers. So we're gonna put 20 of the anchos in there. Oh my goodness, these ones smell so good too. These are the, I don't know how to pronounce those. And these have, they're really good quality peppers. They're really soft and supple. So I'm gonna put 20 of these in here as well. I'm gonna put five of the New Mexican. I'm gonna do five of the, no, I'm gonna do 10 of the Californians. And then I'm gonna put five more of these uh, to add up to 20. Here are all the peppers we need for our enchilada sauce. Now that our cast iron is nice, whoa, this bowl's hot. <laughs> We're just gonna put them in here and toast them for about 10 seconds on each side. That'll just help bring out the oils and flavor in the peppers. You definitely do not want to over toast them. I've done that before and it makes them really, really bitter. Once they're toasted, we're gonna take them out. You have to be careful with these really dark ones because they are hard to tell if they're getting too dark. Oh, these ones are puffing up. Okay, we have all of our peppers toasted. Turn this cast iron off. While we were waiting for the peppers to cool down, I washed up a bunch more onions for our sauce that we're gonna be making in the roaster, our garlic, these are those elephant garlic peels you can, or cloves, you can just see how big they are. Now that our peppers have cooled, what we need to do is de-seed and de-stem them. And this is really easy. All we're gonna do, oh see like this one, the stem already fell off. We're gonna open it up. Because we toasted it, they're a little bit more pliable because they've warmed up. You don't have to be perfect with the seeds or anything. You just kind of rip it open and let the seeds fall. And then we're gonna put our pepper skins over here. A lot of times the seeds will just kind of come out. Making enchilada sauce is not hard, but there is a little bit of a process to it. And that's why if I'm gonna go through the effort of making it, I like to go ahead and just make a lot of it so I don't have to do it as often. I love doing stuff like this though. See how the seeds just fall out? They smell so good. So you don't have to be perfect. There's still a couple seeds in there. We're not gonna worry about that at all. Just plop that in there. This is what we have left out of the seeds and the stems. And this is what we harvested with all the peppers. So let's go ahead and go on to the next step with these peppers. What I'm gonna do we're gonna take our peppers and we're gonna put them in a pot and we're gonna boil these peppers until they're really soft. We're gonna have these peppers come up to a boil and simmer for at least 15 minutes until they're really, really soft. And then we will blend those up. What I wanna do now is get these onions pureed and into our roaster pan. So we're gonna do basically the exact same thing we did with the other one, but this is gonna be a base for tomato soup, pasta sauces, whatever it might be. I just really love that flavor. I've never canned anything like that before, and it just tasted so delicious. We're gonna pressure can this as well. While 
while I've been waiting for the peppers to boil, I just got a ton of tomatoes in my apron, and we're gonna put these in our tomato sauce. Tomorrow night for dinner, I wanna make a tomato tart or pie, so I'm putting those tomatoes over there. I'm gonna save those for tomorrow, those big ones. The Roma tomatoes, I'm gonna throw in the freezer here in a minute, and these ones, we're gonna get blended up. I'm not sure why I put them in my apron. Oh, I should have just put them right in here. These little tomatoes, I'm not gonna worry about taking the tops off. We're just gonna blend them up. Now the way I normally do this is I will put these tomatoes whole in my roaster pan and I will use a stick blender to blend them when I'm just making like a crushed tomatoes, which basically that's what I'm making here. Well, my stick blender broke, and so I do need to get a new stick blender. I just haven't had a chance to order one yet, so I am gonna do that here pretty soon so that I don't have to use the blender because it is a lot faster. Oh! My peppers are boiling. I do, have a wooden, I do have a wooden spoon in my peppers. So before I process all the tomatoes that I have in my freezer, I'm definitely gonna pick up a new stick blender because it's a lot faster to throw frozen tomatoes into the roaster pan or on the pot on the stove and have them cook from frozen and then just whiz them with a stick blender than to have to go through the process of continually using a blender to blend them up before you cook them down. This is a much more tedious process, and that is why the stick blender method is the best, in my opinion, for me. I have this nice and full, but I want this to thicken up, and what I'm gonna to use to thicken it up are some dehydrated tomatoes from last year. I'm gonna throw these in our messy blender here, and that will help thicken it up a lot faster then just cooking, cooking, cooking it down. Let's take some of our tomato puree, throw that in there, to get it a little bit smoother. Oh yeah, this is turning into a beautiful paste. Look how thick that is, that is perfect. I decided to blend up the whole entire container of these dried tomatoes because I have one more gallon in the pantry. This stuff tastes so good. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to be able to can this up a lot faster because it's gonna thicken the sauce a whole lot faster. I'm using those dried tomatoes like tomato paste. Some people like to put tomato paste, canned tomato paste in their tomato products. I personally prefer not to do that only because if I have something like this, I would rather use this because it's homegrown. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but a lot of our tomatoes, especially tomato paste in the United States that we consume is actually grown overseas and I prefer it to be local if at all possible. So I think this is going to work great for me today. and. I always like to have dried tomatoes on hand for just a time like this. They have been simmering away for about 20 minutes. And so we're gonna get this all blended up. Now we gotta be very careful because this is hot. I can continue to use this blender because all it's had in it is tomatoes and the same thing that's in the enchilada sauce. So we're gonna put this boiled peppers in our blender. Because this is so hot, I don't want to burn myself. So we're going to take our liquid and we're going to use that to blend up our peppers. Yum. This is what turns this tomato sauce into enchilada sauce. I'm gonna blend up the rest of the peppers and get those in here. This is the last of it, mostly just the liquid. 
And now we're gonna let this simmer. I need to taste test it. It might need a tad of sugar, and we need to test the salt level because those peppers didn't have any salt in them. But look at that beautiful color. That is such a beautiful color. Now it feels like I'm stirring the cauldron. So let's give this a taste test. That is phenomenal. There is no bitter notes to it, which means I did not burn those peppers. I have done that before where I've burnt the peppers. I think what I'm gonna, I think it needs something. We are almost there. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. Honestly, I don't think it needs any sugar, which is awesome. That's way too much salt. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of cumin. Yep, that's cumin. Maybe about two tablespoons. Remember, this is a huge pot. And maybe a little bit of coriander. Those were not in the recipes, but I think that will just round out the flavors there. And I am loving my spices here. A couple concerns with having spices there is that they're close to the dishwasher and the heat but you guys see how heavily I spice stuff. I go through spices so quick that I don't think I'm worried about that. That was it. The cumin, the coriander, the salt. I think we're there. That is so good. Make yourself some enchilada sauce. It is way better than the can. The can sometimes has kind of like a, I mean, I use the can, you guys have seen it because I ran out of this a long time ago, is kind of like a soury taste to it. And this is so rich, so bold, no bitter notes, no sugar needed, fresh, 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 fresh. The onions and tomatoes, I am making this, this is my standard enchilada sauce recipe from now on. I'm gonna write down the little tweaks I did. I'm gonna let this cook for just a minute and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Well, actually, I'm going to clean this kitchen because I've got a sink full of dirty dishes. I have a counter full of dirty dishes. My dishwasher's clean. I've got all these dishes here. Our tomato sauce cooking away. I did clean off that counter. I didn't think quartz, that's what those counters are, stained. But where the tomatoes were sitting, I noticed that there was some like marks on there. So I'm gonna put a towel down before I ripen any more tomatoes on there. But I want to get all of these dishes taken care of before we start the next step on. You know what? Yes, because this is driving me crazy. One of the byproducts of cooking from scratch and making a lot of your own food at home is you do get a lot of dishes. But the way that I like to cook and bulk batch things is I may have a day like today or yesterday where I spent the majority of the day in the kitchen, but because I do big projects like this, I do freezer meals, I tend to cook only about three meals a week that are what would serve a family of six, it means that I really don't have to be in the kitchen all the time. <laughs> Not every day do I do a big batch like this because I'm gonna take the time today to make probably two years worth of enchilada sauce and some red sauce that can be the base for other recipes. And that will allow me then later that I don't have to spend as much time in the kitchen to have a homemade product. I do enjoy doing this. I'm passionate about home cooked food and scratch made food. And it is a hobby, but I also am passionate about, you know, keeping my uh, money local and being able to support the local farmer who I bought these tomatoes from, which if I didn't buy these tomatoes and no one else bought them, then they would have just been compost. And so it's a win-win that I get to have a fun day in the kitchen, I get to support a local farmer, and I get some amazing food out of it. It is time to get this enchilada sauce in jars, but first we have to strain it. So I have a glass jar or a glass bowl, a strainer, and 
All we're gonna do is scoop our enchilada sauce into our fine mesh strainer. I quickly realized this method was gonna take way too long. So what I just spent the last 20 minutes doing was setting up my sauce master. I had a hard time figuring out where exactly I could fit it in the kitchen where it would attach. And we're gonna use this in just a minute. But first, I'm gonna get a load of this sauce in our electric pressure canner. So that we can at least have something going in the canner while we work on other projects. I have our electric pressure canner heating up because this is hot pack. We're putting hot sauce into the jars, so we need the water that we put these jars into to be hot. I love this electric pressure canner because it does it all for you. It's so nice. So we put our five jars in there. I'm gonna close it, lock it, push the next button. It's gonna heat up, it's gonna vent for 10 minutes, and then we'll push the pressure can button and it'll pressure can it. Here is our new setup. We have our enchilada sauce that needs to be strained. We have our sauce master. I have a bowl right here. And then I needed to find a way to have a bowl to catch the enchilada sauce. So I brought in a table. This is my outdoor like side table. So we'll see how well this setup works. This is so much faster than what I was doing earlier. And this is coming out really nice and dry. This is hot, so I need to be careful, but I'm gonna start, I need to get another bowl too. A little sketchy here. I put a towel all over this thing just because this is a little splashy. Okay. This is hot, so we need to be careful. I'm just gonna use this as a pot got taller sides so hopefully it'll splash a little bit less but now that I have a big bowl let's get that in some jars and get that candy. I want you to see how beautiful and smooth this enchilada sauce is now. I think it's worth going through that step. Let me show you the difference. You can see how chunky this is. It has the seeds and the skins. I thought about skipping this step but I think it's worth it because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. That is not going to waste. Since I have enough enchilada sauce to run the canner once, I don't want to waste this time. I want to get the canner working for me. So we're going to get the pints filled. This is beautiful sauce. Now at this point, this is where if you do not want to or you don't feel comfortable pressure canning this enchilada sauce, you could certainly freeze it. If you freeze your enchilada sauce, I would recommend freezing it in a plastic container or a wide mouth mason jar and leaving a good solid inch and a half to two inches of headspace. But I would really encourage you to try pressure canning. I was nervous to do it. It took me two and a half years, no, excuse me, it took me five years before I finally did it. And I wish I had started years before. This is why I love this pressure canner. It beeps every time you need to do the next step. You do not have to watch it. So it's vented for 10 minutes, so we close the vent. We push can, and now it's gonna can. And I don't have to think about this. 
at all until it beeps again. And now they go into the canner. And the cool thing about this Presto canner that goes on the stove top is I can double stack this. So we're gonna fill it one layer with quartz. Then I have a tray. We're gonna put this on top and then we're gonna fill it with another layer. I have never done this before. So I don't even know how many jars fit in here. I'm not even sure if I filled enough to do two layers. Okay, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten. So we can put 20 in here. We're gonna put our tray. Okay, we have our canner full with our 20 pints. So we're gonna put our lid on. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn it up higher we need this to come to a boil, and there's a little vent right here. When steam starts coming out of this vent, just like it was on our electric pressure canner, we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. And then for my elevation and for pints, I need this to be at at least 11 pounds of pressure for 50 minutes. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that step. So this dial needs to go to 11 after it vents for 10 minutes. Now I found this to work better. I have my canner pot here and this bowl up here, so it's a lot closer, so a lot less splashing. So this is working really, really well. We have about one third of our big pot left to run through the soft spencer. And this is the last of the enchilada sauce going through the food mill. How incredibly satisfying. I have my two freeze dryer trays here. Two of my trays already have mashed potatoes on them from yesterday. And we are going to freeze dry this pulp and we're gonna turn it into basically chili powder because that's what it is. It's got a bunch of chili peppers in it, onions, garlic, and tomato. And we can put this in anything we would put chili powder in. I'll powder it up in the Vitamix after it comes out of the freeze dryer. And this will be basically a homemade taco seasoning because it also has the cumin and coriander in it as well. I'm gonna throw this in the freezer, cool it down a little bit, and I'm gonna go run out to the freeze dryer and turn the freeze dryer on to cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just fill all the jars from this tomato sauce. I love putting in the, what is it called? The dried tomatoes, because this thickened up in a matter of two hours cooking in here versus, or maybe three, versus I normally cook my pasta sauce or something like crushed tomatoes overnight. And you definitely don't lose as much because you're using that dried tomato to thicken it up. So I'm gonna make sure that I dry a bunch of tomatoes this year so that I can do this next year. I think I'll have plenty of tomatoes. My tomatoes are just really starting to come in. The nice thing about pressure canning these tomato sauce too is I don't have to add any sort of acid or lemon juice or a citric acid. Citric acid to make this more of acidic environment for safe water bath canning, which is nice because it makes for a sweeter tomato sauce, which is what we all want. My pressure canner on the stove is starting to vent, so I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. So I just made a mistake. I was distracted and I was washing dishes and I had turned this down because this was boiling really, really hard. And I had it venting, which you can see now it is venting. It's hard to see, but there is steam coming out of here. And while I was washing dishes, because I turned the stove down, this stopped venting. So what I had to do is turn the stove back on and I need to reset the timer for 10 minutes and I need this to vent for 10 minutes. What this does is it helps build that pressure and you have to have that in order for proper pressure canning. So that's just a mistake. That is one thing about the difference between a stovetop canner 
and my electric pressure canner is, I don't have to think about that at all with my electric pressure canner, but I can fit 20 pints in here and I cannot fit 20 pints in my electric pressure canner. There's definitely pros and cons to both, but I just wanna be honest with you that if you do not follow the steps properly, you have to start over because pressure canning is not something you can mess around with. You need to follow the directions properly and it'll be totally safe. There's nothing to be scared with pressure canning as long as you know the rules and you follow the rules and you don't skip steps. That's really important. I'm getting the last of the enchilada sauce jarred up here and we have reached our pressure point. So now I can set the timer for 50 minutes. It has to at least be at 11 pounds of pressure for 50 minutes. We are going to dinner between 6.30, I think, and 7. I need to text my family member and ask them what time again. And I want this kind of this place kind of tidied up before I go because when I get back, I'm going to have to run that pressure canner again. I cannot have my stovetop pressure canner going while we're gone, but I can have this one going while we're gone. So this one will be done. I'll be able to empty it and load it up with five more jars before we go as long as I've gotten through all the steps and it is canning. So that is one cool thing about that electric pressure canner. Oh, we did not get quite as much done today as I was anticipating, but the cool thing is we got at least two years worth of enchilada sauce. I think in here, the enchilada sauce is a little bit labor of love, but if I'm gonna do it, I might as well go big and not have to do it next year. I do like to sometimes can two years worth of something if I can, just in case next year I can't get that product or I don't have to then can all the things every year. It can be a lot of work to do this canning thing. I enjoy it, I love it. But if I had to can every single thing every single year, that would be a lot. I don't have to can any salsa this year except for salsa verde because I know I didn't can enough of that last year. But I know that next year, I am not going to have to can enchilada sauce because this is probably more than enough to get us through this year and next year. That is my timer for this enchilada sauce. So I'm gonna turn this off and we're gonna let this cool down completely before we do anything with it. It is time to go to dinner. I thought I was gonna have time to empty my electric pressure canner and refill it before I went to dinner, but it is not cool yet. So both of these will be cooling completely. After dinner, I will for sure be loading up more of this tomato base into the electric pressure canner. I did get all the rest of the enchilada jars jarred up and ready to go. And I got 99% of the dishes done. I still need to wash the sauce master and I'm just letting that soak with the um, roaster pan. I love using roaster pans in canning projects, but they do get really hot. And so the food does kind of crust on the side, so it's good to let them soak before you scrub them. So I'm gonna do that. This I could have washed, but I'm tired. So I'm gonna go run to dinner. I'm gonna go enjoy someone else's cooking. And then we'll be back to take care of the rest of this.